Few weapons in history carry as much mystique and craftsmanship as the samurai sword, or katana. With its elegant curve, razor-sharp edge, and nearly unbreakable structure, the katana is more than just a weapon. It's a symbol of Japanese culture, discipline, and masterful craftsmanship. But what makes the katana so special? Why does it hold up so well in battle while maintaining an edge sharp enough to slice through targets effortlessly? The answer lies in one of the most critical steps of its forging process, differential hardening. This unique technique isn't just about making the blade harder. It's about striking the perfect balance between hardness and flexibility. Without it, a katana wouldn't have its legendary durability or cutting power. In this video, we'll break down the science behind differential hardening, why it's necessary, and how it transforms a simple piece of steel into a warrior's ultimate weapon. Let's break it down, right here, on History of Simple Things. What is differential hardening? Before we dive into the why, let's first explain the what. Differential hardening is a heat treatment process that hardens certain areas of the blade while leaving others softer and more flexible. In most swords or knives, the entire blade is either uniformly hardened or made with the same level of flexibility. While this works for many weapons, it doesn't create the unique properties of a katana which needs a hard cutting edge, but a flexible spine to absorb impact without shattering. So how do swordsmiths achieve this? The secret lies in the use of clay. During the forging process, a skilled swordsmith applies a special clay mixture to the blade before heating and quenching it. But it's not applied evenly. Different thicknesses of clay are used for different parts of the blade. A thin layer of clay is applied to the cutting edge. This allows the edge to cool rapidly when quenched, making it extremely hard and capable of holding a sharp edge. A thick layer of clay is applied to the spine of the blade. This slows down the cooling process, making the metal remain softer and more flexible. Once the clay is applied, the blade is heated to a critical temperature and then rapidly cooled, usually in water. This sudden temperature change locks in the different properties of the steel, creating the iconic characteristics of a samurai sword. But why go through all this effort? Why not just harden the entire blade for maximum sharpness? The answer comes down to balancing strength and flexibility. The science behind the hard edge. A katana is famous for its unparalleled cutting ability. This is possible because of the extreme hardness of its edge. When the cutting edge cools rapidly during the quenching process, the steel undergoes a transformation into martensite, a crystalline structure that is incredibly hard but also brittle. This hardness gives the katana its razor-sharp cutting edge, capable of slicing through bamboo, tatami mats, and even steel helmets in historical battles. However, there's a catch. If a blade were hardened all the way through, it would be too brittle and prone to breaking upon impact. That's where the soft spine comes in. The importance of a flexible spine. While the edge of the blade is designed for cutting, the spine needs to be able to withstand the shock of impact. If a sword were completely hardened, it would have no flexibility. A strong hit could cause it to snap in half, making it completely useless in battle. But with differential hardening, the softer spine, containing more perlite, a softer crystalline structure, can absorb the force of a strike, preventing the blade from breaking. This combination of a hard edge and a flexible spine is what allows a katana to be both deadly and durable. Think of it like a tree in the wind. A rigid tree that cannot bend will snap in a storm while a flexible tree will sway and absorb the impact. The katana works the same way, strong enough to cut, but flexible enough to withstand battle.
Differential hardening doesn't just make the katana stronger. It also creates one of its most recognizable features, the Heyman line. The Heyman is the wavy or straight line that runs along the blade, marking the boundary between the hard edge and the softer spine. This effect is not decorative. It's a natural result of the different cooling rates during the quenching process. However, over time, the Heyman became an aesthetic signature of a swordsmith's skill. Different schools of sword making developed unique Heyman patterns, turning each katana into a one-of-a-kind masterpiece. If differential hardening is so effective, why don't we see it in all swords? The truth is, not every weapon requires the same level of performance as a katana. Most European swords, for example, were made using a different philosophy. Instead of relying on differential hardening, many were made with multiple types of steel welded together, creating a balance of hardness and flexibility through layering. Additionally, differential hardening requires incredible skill and precision. A small mistake in the clay application, heating, or quenching process can result in a sword that is too brittle, too soft, or even cracked. This level of craftsmanship made the katana one of the most challenging swords to forge. So, why do samurai swords require differential hardening? It all comes down to achieving the perfect balance between cutting power and durability. Without this technique, a katana would either be too brittle to last in battle or too soft to hold a sharp edge. Differential hardening solves this problem by creating a hard edge for slicing and a flexible spine for absorbing impact, a combination that makes the katana one of the most iconic weapons in history. Beyond its functionality, differential hardening also gives the katana its unique aesthetic, including the beautiful Heyman line that serves as both a signature of craftsmanship and a testament to centuries of sword-making tradition. Even though the days of samurai warriors are long gone, the science and artistry of katana making continue to inspire modern metallurgy. From knives to industrial tools, the principles behind differential hardening still shape the way we create strong, effective cutting instruments. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.